Hey, what up, America? This your boy, Bouchon Glover, with a Better Black America TV on YouTube. Now, today is Monday, September 10th, 2018. Now, I'm going to have uh, just do a little quick snippet, quick video today. You know, and uh, entertainment, sports, money, and politics is my thing. Entertainment, sports, politics, and money. So I'm just do a little sports and politics today and segue to two because our um, New Jersey Senator Cory Booker had a Spartacus moment uh, late last week, and Serena Williams had a Mike Tyson moment Saturday. So we're going to go ahead and just, I'll, I'll connect the two, but um, the climate is right. Okay, because you have people stepping out on faith and things are, you, you know, doing things so different. And uh, during the Judge uh, Kavanaugh's hearings, uh, Senator Cory Booker, who's one of the opponents uh, who do not want uh, this guy to be cleared to be a uh, Supreme Court justice, uh, more in part because he's a uh, Trump nominated. So he's a part of that resist. And we all know if you resist, then change can't exist. So he basically, he's double, he's, he's, uh, doing his thing to make sure that this doesn't happen. But during the process of this last week, he said that uh, he'll be willing to lose everything. He basically told, and, and, I, and I quote, you know, I, this is, this, well, this is what he said. I'll have, uh, this is the close, closest I'll get to my, my Spartacus moment, you know, his Spartacus moment. And if those of you who have not seen Spartacus, I don't want to spoil it for you, but in the movie Spartacus, uh, the character stood up and said, I am Spartacus. And then each man, I am Spartacus. I am Spartacus. For those who haven't seen it, it's kind of like, like I'm a movie buff. Now, and I kind of, it reminded me of the movie Life. When Can't Get Right uh, got Judge, Aberna I mean, su uh, Superintendent Abernathy's daughter, May Rose, pregnant, and they had a baby, so they had the brown baby. The superintendent came out and was putting the baby by all the black faces. And when he got to Can't Get Right, and can't get right, you know, he, he couldn't talk. So he wanted to say something, but he couldn't say something. So before he was declared the one that that's his child or to even be classified as being his child, Eddie Murphy's character stepped up and said, I'm the father of that child, boss. And then Martin Lawrence's character came up, I'm the father of that child. And then so on and forth, so Bernie May, everybody, I'm that baby's daddy. So basically his Spartacus moment was, it's like a, it was supposed to be a, a snowball effect to where he steps up and somebody else steps up and it just becomes a trend. But he used the wrong terminology because everybody died. <laughs> okay, so why would you step up and just go into a buzzsaw just because this guy decided to do that? But what he should have said, and I would have respected more, and which in my mind as a social chemist was so true because he should have said, uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm having a Colin Kaepernick moment. This is my Colin Kaepernick moment because who? The face of Nike was the slogan for the new Just Do It campaign. Believe in something, even if it means giving up everything, even if it means losing everything. So basically, Cory Booker said it himself. I'll be willing to give up my seat for what I believe in. Uh, uh, you know, I'm sitting like, dog, nah, bro. Now you know Spartacus, nigga. You had a Colin Kaepernick moment. <laughs> believe in something, even if it means giving up your Senate seat. In which, uh, hey, he put his yeah. Hey, it's on him. So he had a Colin Kaepernick moment. Now, Serena Williams had a Mike Tyson moment this weekend. And let me go ahead and just set the premise why I believe she had a Mike Tyson moment. Now, Serena Williams played in the finals this weekend and lost a tennis match to a girl named Naomi Osaka. I should say a woman named Naomi Osaka who represents Japan. Now, by her representing Japan, while I'm watching it, you know, I turned it on and I saw, but before I can see, I saw the Japan, Japan. I'm sitting there like, wait a minute. That's a sister. You know what I'm saying? So I started, you know, I jumped to the computer, started doing my research. So apparently she, she has a, uh, her father's Belizean. And then I read a few other stories because I like to peel things layer by layer, like push your teeth. And I found out that Serena Williams and Naomi Osaka has, they, has similar upbringing. And come to find out that the girl that the, the, the woman that defeated Serena, Naomi Osaka, Serena Williams was her idol. When she was growing up, Serena Williams was, was, was her idol. We all know that Serena Venus, you know, they, they grew up in Compton and their father taught them the game of tennis on public courts in Compton. But Naomi Osaka's father did the same thing. He's Haitian. So she spent majority of her, of her life 
in Florida as well as New York. And she trained on and was taught by her father on the public courts in Florida, Fort Lauderdale. And she even mentioned during in the article and in the interview that that the kids used to run from the basketball courts, watch them play tennis, and when they were finished, they'd be like, oh, you're going to be the next seat, Serena and Venus. Because she does have a sister who's basically, she's, her sister's ranked 397. I don't have her, I didn't write the sister's name down. But uh, th- due to injury, she's not, you know, in that top 100. So it's, she's really not relevant at this time. But they did, you know, play on the public courts. And that was the parallel because she said that the kids would say, y'all going to be the next Serena and Venus. And uh, Naomi actually uh, stated that, you know, when she would be in tough matches and she would be behind and things of that nature, that she would um, think to herself, what would Serena do? What would Serena do? So she actually was playing her idol. But why I say Serena Williams had a Mike Tyson moment is because by me doing the research, I found out that when Serena, uh, her first tournament that she lost when she came back uh, from maternity leave from having her baby, her daughter, that she lost to Naomi Osaka. Okay, but at the time, Serena made all the excuses in the world. Talking about, you know, hey, I'm breastfeeding and, you know, it's my first match back. You know, I can only come up from this. So fast forward to, to uh, Saturday. OK, during the interviews, you know, the, the pregame interviews and things of that nature, Serena Williams went on record and said, um, you know, this won't be the same outcome. I played her before, so I know how she plays. So that's the advantage for me. So I got the advantage this time because she didn't play the real me. So to meet me in the finals right now, you have to know that I'm on my A game because to make it to the finals, you have to be pretty good. Okay. So they both playing in the finals. So I'm watching this match and this girl clown is when I say clown and I mean clown. Now you athletes, you know, without shall of a doubt, athletics is, is an emotional sport and basketball. The referees can uh, influence the game football. The referees can influence any game, but in the, the, the parallel between golf um, basketball and tennis it's really about putting the ball in the hoop, putting the ball in the hole, or keeping the ball in bounds. Okay, so the referee cannot really influence the game to that nature unless you try to find an excuse to have issues with the ref because you're getting your kick. Like, seriously, she, I mean, she was, I was sitting there like, man, either Serena losing it or that girl's really good. But for Serena to actually be Venus during that tournament and actually get to the finals, that means Serena had to go on her A game. But this youngster, Naomi Osaka, is very good at tennis. So when Serena Williams started beefing with the referee, that was her emotions getting involved. So and this and think about it. It was the second time that she played her. The first time she lost to her had every excuse in the world. I was breastfeeding this time around. She's getting blasted and she don't know what the reason is because. You said it yourself. You're not breastfeeding. All the st- all the uh, uh, nuances that took place in the first time at your first meeting, it's not here now. So what do you do now? So now she want to start tripping on the referee. Okay, so she got so now she tripping on a referee who has nothing to do with getting aced, keeping the ball in the court, serving, breaking racket, none of none of that stuff. So when I say she had a Mike Tyson moment, because I remember when um, uh, Mike Tyson Holyfield too. So Holyfield beat Mike Tyson in the first fight. And Mike Tyson went on record and actually stated that he was blacking out because Holyfield, from a defensive posture, Holyfield would put his head down and Mike Tyson's style was forward. So the heads would clash, but Holyfield would use his head as a weapon. And it's actually legal in, in boxing because they don't call it unless it's a, you know, just a purpose head. But, but if you just lock up and your style just, just basically, it, it is what it is. So first fight, Holyfield beat the hell out of Mike Tyson. So second fight, hindsight is 20, 20 and, and, and first time, shame on me. Second time, shame on you. So the second time around, you know, Mike Tyson fans, and I was rooting for Holyfield, but Mike Tyson fans, you know, we, you would have to assume that you're going to come with a different strategy. You know how this man fight the first time. So the second time around, you know, how, you, you know what to do. So I'm not going to do the same thing, but as the fight progressed from the start, it looked like it was about to happen again. Same thing about to happen. Just like when Serena played that girl the first time, without, you know, it's about to happen again. But this time it's on the world stage because it, this is the U.S. Open. So just like the Mike Tyson parallel or the Mike Tyson connection, Mike Tyson decided, you know what? I can't beat this fool. I, I can't go, you know, uh, eight more rounds of this. And what did he do? <sighs> he, bought, he, he bit Holyfield's ear off. 
because he knew he couldn't beat Holyfield. So what did Serena do? She started tripping on the referee because something inside of her knew she couldn't beat this girl. Okay, because it's about not like make some misses in basketball or putting a hole in the in, in, in the cup for, for, for golf. Keep the ball in bounds. There's there's video cameras if the ball's in or out, none of that. But Serena breaking the racket, broke two rackets. Okay. And it's an embarrassment because as black people, that's what that's how they expect us to act. Can you imagine what the white folks were saying? Tennis is an etiquette sport. And one of the reasons why Serena got upset is because while she was getting smoked by this girl, she was looking into the audience at her coach, which is illegal in tennis because tennis is an etiquette sport. And he's giving her hand gestures on what she needs to do to overcome this atrocity and this spanking. OK, the ref caught that and called her a cheater. Now, she want to play the, the woman card. Look at look at all this aggression and talking this crap. And then all of a sudden you're going to you're going to say, uh, uh, you know, I have a daughter. You know, that's 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 I don't know what the issue was, but it was misguided. It was just anger and frustration. And when Serena Williams, I guess a few weeks ago, when when the uh, tennis association showed up at her house for a random drug test, this is one of the reasons why, because tennis is an etiquette sport. You know, even on your serve, they sh- 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 they hush you like off. But it was misguided, okay? But Serena knew without a shadow of a doubt that she was about to take that L. And while she was taking that L, I looked up and see how did um, Naomi Osaka get there. Naomi Osaka actually only gave up like two or three points in the entire tournament. So the girl is really good. But for Serena Williams to act like that, I mean, she broke two tennis rackets. She was just, I mean, like she like uncontrollable. And then this is the, the difference between men and women because now you, you're doing all of this aggression and now you want to cry about it, okay? But all of it was misguided. But the thing that hurt my heart and one of the reasons that inspired me to do this video is because Serena Williams says she has a daughter and she's fighting for women equality. You weren't playing a man. That was a girl kicking your butt, okay? And I could see why, you know, she has a child by a white boy or, or, or Caucasian, and why she don't date blacks. Because just imagine a black man in the audience while his wife tripping. You know, that's the breadwinner. And he holding the baby. Talking about, girl, stop tripping. Nigga, forget that rep. Do your thing. Don't worry about that fool. You know what I'm saying? Just do your thing. Can you imagine that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because just imagine she was married to or had a baby by a black man. He would have been like, baby, come on. Get your mind right. Don't worry about that. He ain't hitting those points. Do what you got to do. But she's sitting there so emotionally charged and can't even focus you know but when you look back that she already lost to this girl so you can't say the referee took anything from you because the girl kicked your butt and at the end of the day what bothered me and which bothered uh, bothered a lot of people is the fact that during the ceremony for the winner and the runner-up man they booed Naomi Osaka I mean literally booed her I mean she she was dropping tears and, 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 and was so emotional. And one of the reasons why she says that as a father from Haiti, mother from Japan, grew up mostly in Florida and New York, why she chose to represent um, Japan was because of her demeanor, her posture, how she was raised. She said when she go to Tokyo, she feel at home. You know, you know they're, they're, they're not aggressive. They're a little, you know, uh, docile. And or, 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 you know, Mac was saying pocket, you know, but she cried. So she was robbed of one of the most significant moments in her life. Not matter of fact, she was robbed of the most significant moment of her life to date because of Serena Williams acting like a nigga. I mean, straight up. I mean, we have to be like, you can't call me racism for saying because if this was my sister, why you out there showing your colors? We all hear that. So we got to be honest with ourselves and, and, and not be judgmental, but, but be transparent and honest because we we supposed to be, you know, at a different standard because, they, you know, they expect us to act like that. The only person that I saw ever saw act like that was John McEnroe back in the day. OK, and he, he had the white privilege. He was an emotional guy and all that stuff. But I understand that. But on the big stage to rob this girl of one of the most significant moments in her lifetime. I mean, that's not fair. So when you say you have a daughter, you fight for women equality, what about the rights of this woman? What about you robbing her of her opportunity, okay? 
from her getting her, you know, like that's not cool. 